everyone, and welcome to exercise three, descriptions. The descriptions unit gives students practice using their words to describe physical objects, concrete concepts, and abstract ideas. This unit should take approximately 25 minutes to complete. The first few slides in this section offer some tips on how to write helpful descriptions, followed by another activity. As with the other modules, you should spend most of your time on the activity. Like the algorithm in the illustrations module, we begin this unit by explaining to students a basic framework for writing descriptions. For that reason, I like to connect this exercise back to the illustrations module by saying something along the lines of, this algorithm is reminiscent of the illustrations algorithm in the last module. Start with something big, break it into subparts, and then explain each part. Another helpful aid for writing descriptions is to find comparisons that make sense to the reader. With that said, make sure you remind students that when making a comparison, they should make sure that the audience is already familiar with the comparative concept or object. For instance, if you have an international audience, then comparing the size of the item you are describing to the size of a localized currency will not make sense to part of your audience. This is the slide that introduces the exercise to students. Like other exercises, students should first work on their own solutions. Students will switch and discuss answers with their partner on the next slide. It's usually best to give students some constraints on this activity. For instance, as the slides describe, we recommend telling students that they should not use mathematical measurements and photos in their descriptions to make sure they are actually using their words to describe the thumbtacks. Due to time constraints, students should not describe the use of the thumbtack, only the appearance. I also like to recommend that students use the image on the screen if they're questioning what a thumbtack is. This will help ensure that students are actually describing thumbtacks rather than the more complex shape of a pushpin. I usually give students about 10 minutes to work on the exercise and give a three and a one minute warning. Have students return to their partners from the last exercise and give them about two minutes to compare and discuss answers. If the room is getting too quiet, you can move on to the class discussion early. Bring the class back together and ask students if they or their partner had any interesting or unusual parts in their descriptions. Spend about five minutes on this open discussion. Some classes are naturally more talkative than others. If students are not volunteering answers, Try to offer an idea that might jumpstart the discussion. On days when students are participating, I often write down especially interesting ideas to seed discussions in future untalkative class sessions. As the open discussion wraps up, you should swap to this page, which shows the start of a possible thumbtack description. As always, remember to tell students that this is just one way to write a description and that there are countless other good descriptions. The beginning of the solution introduces the topic and explains what we are and are not describing. The second half of this slide offers three possible next sentences that use comparisons. If any of the comparisons came up in the earlier discussion, I like to call back to those and compliment the students on coming up with these possibilities. The second half of the answer demonstrates one way to use the description formula. The example breaks a thumbtack into two parts and describes each part separately. I also like to point out to students that it is important to define terms in the initial description stage so that you can use the terms later on in a document. Here we define and describe a cap and a stem. Also point out to students the use of comparisons within this algorithmic description. This ends the descriptions unit.